Hey everyone, Spencer from 45 Drives with another Tuesday Tech Tip. Today we're going to be talking about encryption in ZFS. So, encryption. Uh, specifically encryption in ZFS. Uh, ZFS has had native encryption for quite some time now on a file system basis, um, but we haven't really talked about it too much recently, or I think ever. Uh, but basically, ZFS has a command line tool uh, for encrypting your ZFS data sets. Uh, ZFS by default uses the AES encryption standard, which is a, a NIST certified standard. Um, so today we're gonna explore how we can implement the ZFS encryption, uh, what it looks like in practice. Uh, we're gonna pop down to the server room for a little bit here too. Uh, and just kind of explore what we can do with it and how to protect your data better. Uh, so we'll pop into this command line here and get started. All right, so to get started, uh, we're just gonna kind of show off the little environment I've made here. So I have two servers. I have this uh, lab server here and this Ubuntu 45D server. Uh, so this lab server, I created this little tech tip uh, Z pool, uh, which is what we're gonna be using for our encryption. And this other server is what we're gonna import that pool to uh, once we get down to the server room. So to get started, uh, we'll cover how to get that bucket encrypted. I'll pop up the font size a little bit here so you can all actually see. Um, so encrypting ZFS data sets is, is very easy. Uh, there's a full command line suite for it. So we'll just issue this command here, ZFS create dash O, and then we define if we want the data set to have encryption. So of course encryption equals on. We can then decide how we want to actually pass our key uh, to the uh, given data set. Um, so there's a, there's a number of ways to do this. So you could have like a key file that you could put on like a USB stick and physically carry it around. Um, for us, that's a little impractical, so we're gonna make a key phrase. Uh, so we're gonna set key format to uh, passphrase. Uh, we're then gonna decide on a name. So we'll call this one uh, tech tip slash uh, demo-e for demo encryption, and kick that off. So it's gonna prompt us for a passphrase. Uh, if we don't have a passphrase that's eight or more letters, it'll yell at us that it's too short. So we'll go ahead and pick a, a decently secure one. And it makes us re-enter. Alrighty, so now if we CD into our tech tip Z pool, we can see we have a uh, demo-e directory or data set or file system as, Z, as uh, ZFS calls them. And we can see the into there. So in order to actually see encryption working, we'll need data in this. We can't just move around a, an empty, full, uh, empty pool. We won't really see any actual useful information here. So I've prepared uh, a number of files here, as you can see, uh, but we'll move the uh, Ubuntu ISO there over into that encrypted pool. Move that right quick. Tip. All right, we'll give that a couple seconds to move over. Quite a big file. All right, and it's moved. So now we're going to simulate the whole someone walking over to your server, plucking out the drives. So in order to avoid some, some possible data corruption, I am going to be a little safe about this and actually export the pool properly uh, rather than just yank drives out without doing any prep. But essentially it'd be the same thing regardless. So we'll go ahead and export the pool out. Oop, not that pool, this pool. All right, perfect. And we'll head down to the server room now. All right, and here we are off into the server room. So this is the server that we were working on earlier there. Uh, drives 13 and 14 are the ones that make up the pool for our encrypted. So we'll just go ahead and pop these out. You ever plug out a running drive? It's all gyroscopy. <laughs> and this is the server that we have up there as well. So I'm just gonna pop two drives in here. So we've now taken our Z pool essentially and moved it to that server. But since we've encrypted the data, when we get back to the server room, we shouldn't be able to actually get anything from those two drives. So we'll pop back over there now and take a look. Okay, so we're back in our command line on that server uh, that we plugged those drives into. And we can see here, I've, I've issued the command zpool import and we can see the pool is, is present. Uh, so we'll go ahead and import it properly. And then if we cdo into that, we can see that the demo e folder is there. 
but it doesn't have the Ubuntu ISO uh, because that, that data is encrypted, so our, our server here has no way to actually read that and display it to us. Uh, if we do a ZFS list, uh, we can see that the data set is still present, it's just unreadable. <clears throat> and if we try to mount that, we'll be told that the encryption key is not loaded. Uh, so in order to actually mount this data set and have it usable, um, so if, if assuming these drives you now weren't stolen, but we've just moved them from a server, uh, we'll go ahead and load the key. This command ZFS key load, tech tip, and then the data set. It'll prompt us for our password, which we said earlier. So once we do that, we can now mount the data set properly. And if we CD into the data set now, we can see our Ubuntu ISO is back. So basically, we've moved two drives from one server in a Z pool imported the pool to another server. Um, if we didn't know that password, that data is effectively lost forever. So it's a, it's a great way to be more security conscious about how your data is managed. All right, so that was how we can set up ZFS encryption uh, to keep our data secured from uh, physical interruptions in our data stream. So if someone has physical access to your server and has tried to take those drives uh, for you know, nefarious purposes. Um, it's a great way to keep your data more secure. And with that, we're, we're pretty much done. We'll see you guys next week.